Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to video two on this uh, restoration of this uh, Pioneer model SX1050 stereo receiver. And since the last video, um, quite a bit has been done. As I mentioned, I was going to follow a certain order, which was power supply, power amp, and then go back to the preamp section and then go back to the radio sections. Well, I have uh, sort of followed that and I just want to report back to where we are right now. As I've mentioned in the last video, I'm not going to go and do a, an in-depth tutorial type video on this. Uh, for that, I can honestly say I can't get close to how good uh, Tony at uh, X-Ray Tony B has been on this particular model. So if you really want instructions on how to do things, look at that video. So here we are and um, let me give you a closer look and a brief description as to what has been done so far and then we can look at what the result is on the scope. And yes, we actually do have something coming through on the scope, which is the uh, auxiliary input. And as you can see, we seem to have a bit of a problem. But first things first. First thing I did is I removed that heat sink at the back there, which holds the power transistors. It's uh, four power transistors and uh, there's a pair in parallel for each function. And uh, that, the transistors were fine. I actually measured them. They were very well matched actually. And so that's not a problem, but I did replace the mica insulators and also the uh, heatsink uh, compound, which was completely dried out there. So that was done. Following that, I did this board. This is the driver board. And I replaced the electrolytic capacitors on there. There aren't that many on there. I'm trying to see if you can see that. Oh, there they are. See the gold ones down there? Those are the same capacitors that uh, Tony used. Those are uh, Nishikons, very high quality and perfectly suited for audio applications. So all the electrolytics on there were replaced. And as I said, there weren't many, but there was quite a bit of cleaning to do on that board. A lot of dust. And what I found was especially vexing was the underside had this, I don't know what it was. It's like a layer of something that was very difficult to clean off. And I had to basically at the end, do it with cotton uh, cotton swabs, millimeter at a time. Pretty frustrating, but that got done and it got put back. And of course, the plugs or the connectors on there were all cleaned up with uh, contact cleaner. And what I found is that the actual male prongs for those plugs had uh, some tarnish. So it was cleaned off with this, which is a sort of fiberglass pen and this thing cleans beautifully. It's perfect. The next board I tackled was that board there that you see here, which is the uh, regulator board. There are a lot of electrolytics on there. Some of them were in pretty bad shape. They were all replaced, replaced with high quality electrolytics, also Nishikons, and put back. Everything was cleaned. The uh, board itself, or rather the chassis itself underneath was cleaned as I went along so that when we get to a section that's done, completed and cleaned, we can move on. And the next was the protection circuit. It has uh, two, three, four, five, six electrolytics on there. The big ones at the back there. And then there's these, these little guys over here. This is 0.22 microfarads and I was in two minds about replacing them with film caps, but I did have uh, 0.22 microfarad uh, Nishikon, those gold electrolytics, so I put those in. So that was done as well, and as you can see, or maybe be able to see, the chassis was cleaned as I went along. Uh, isopropyl alcohol, cotton wool, buds, whatever it takes to get the job done. And so what I'm confident in saying now is that the protection circuit is working, the voltage regulator circuit over there is working, and the output board is completely done with the drivers and the power transistors. So that means we can now test what happens when we feed a signal into the back there, into the, the auxiliary input, and what happens uh, when we mess around with some of the controls. So let me show you. Okay, folks, here we have it. We've got the signal coming in. I've got um, 
auxiliary selected. And if I adjust the volume, this is a strange thing. The first strange thing is when you touch this, watch that, it oscillates. That tells me that this thing is not grounded and it should be. And if I do this and touch that, it sort of disappears. So that tells me that the knob is not grounded, which is a little bit strange because the whole thing is metal and it should be grounded. Now, if I take a crocodile clip and I actually touch it, it, there we go, it goes away. So I've got to do this sort of temporarily until I can find out why this thing is not grounded. But I'll touch it and we can adjust the volume. And what we see right off the bat is that this thing, oh crack, this is a pain. We get it into the screen. Okay, let's leave it at that volume level. If I do muting, something strange happens. It goes straight down to the same level and it's supposed to be 20 dB down. If I go up there, watch what happens if I just wiggle this. See that? This whole thing is iffy. There we go. Now it's normal, or nearly normal. Now it's at half level. And if I wiggle it, it comes up again. That slight difference could be, this is the balance control. Very noisy, as you can see. You see all that? So the balance control actually works. but it is noisy as hell. Loudness does something to that one channel as well. And again, I can get it back up. Mono cuts off the one channel completely, which I don't understand why it shouldn't. If I put it on mono, it's both channels. If I put it on stereo, it's cutting off one channel completely. So that switch is also messed up. This is to do with the tape, also very noisy, but basically it's working. These guys are working, but you don't see, well, actually the uh, tone defeat is on. So if I put it on, I can sort of see an effect. This is a one kilohertz uh, signal, so you probably won't see much. This changes it from 10 kilohertz down. Let's see if I do that, it'll have a bigger effect, but that's the 10 kilohertz level, that's the 20 kilohertz level. Treble. Now, bass and uh, the bass and yeah, the bass controls are basically fine, but we won't see any effect on here. So, my biggest concern is this thing, this thing. And now I can't get it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Definitely something wrong there with the switch. But what we're getting is we're getting this thing's, this thing's working. So um, if I do this and give it more volume, let me make sure I don't get this thing oscillating. Uh, there they're basically the same levels and that's well, that's 2.34, that's about half a watt, so it's not much, but it is working. And if I put the volume even higher, my light bulbs start going crazy and the protection circuit goes off, which is normal because the voltage that the system is seeing is now too low. But yeah, we yeah we got 4 volts, 4, 16, 2 watts. It's a very good sine wave, except for when I touch these things. Or when I do that and it comes back at half level and then it picks up again. So there's a lot of cleaning to be done on here. I have to remove the uh, preamp boards. Let me take that down. I can see the light bulbs glowing a bit crazily over there. I've got to remove the front boards, um, get to the switches and get to the controls and do a full cleanup of this, which should be fun. <laughs> yeah, right. Folks. I'm going to leave you for now. I've got lots of work to do here. 
And when I've got something more to report, I'll come back and show you. Once again, I must refer, if you want to get detailed description on how this works, don't ask me. Go to Tony, Tony's uh, channel, X-Ray Tony B. Look for that on YouTube and you'll find a treasure chest of information on these systems and others. He doesn't like simple projects. <laughs> He's got some amazing pieces of equipment that restores there. Once again, thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed that, please click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Links at the end of the video. Bye for now. Stay safe.